Let's imagine that you're standing at the edge of a cliff and there's a beautiful sunset straight in front of you. Then imagine that your eyes catch the shimmer of a river and you look down. The amount that your neck moves downward is what's called the angle of descent. And in this clip, we'll use trigonometry to calculate the angle of descent. So I'll show you an example here, and then later on, I'll get you to try a practice problem on this side, and I'll post the solution. So let's go ahead and have a look at a practice problem that involves an airplane trying to land. An airplane flying at an altitude of 2,600 meters is approaching an airport runway 48 kilometers away. Calculate the airplane's angle of descent. And we've also been given a diagram of the airplane on its runway approach that looks like this. You can see we have the airplane right here and it's on its way towards the runway. And the runway happens to be 48 kilometers away from the plane. The plane happens to be 2,600 meters off of the ground. Now what's called the angle of descent is between the horizontal line here and the line towards the runway. You can imagine the pilot in the cockpit staring straight out ahead. That's the line here, the horizontal line. And then he tilts his neck and looks down towards the runway. So between these two lines is our angle of descent. So between here and here. Oftentimes when we're solving angle of descent problems, a very important rule comes in for parallel lines. It's called the Z law. And we have a Z shape right here. Let me highlight that for you. Using two parallel lines, the horizontal from the plane and the ground, we can draw a sort of Z pattern. And this comes in very handy for trigonometry problems because the law says that this angle must be identical to this angle. So to solve for the angle of descent right here, really we can just solve for this angle since it's identical. Now we have a right angle triangle and we know the length of two sides. So we can go ahead and use SOHCAHTOA for this problem. So let's set up SOHCAHTOA in step one. Since we're talking about this angle right here, it's pointed towards this line. In other words, that line is the opposite, which means the ground in this question is the adjacent. And finally, we have the hypotenuse. Now that our right angle triangle has been labeled, we can go ahead and pick a trigonometry ratio, and that's step two. So ka toa. Sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cos is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse and tan is equal to opposite over adjacent. So which one of those three will work best for us? We're looking for something that uses this angle and uses opposite over adjacent, since those are the two numbers given, opposite over adjacent. So I'm looking at tan here, because tan is opposite over adjacent. So let's set up that ratio now. First, since I don't know this angle, there's no name for it, I'm gonna actually call it x. And that's our unknown. Now we'll say tan of the unknown angle, which is x, is equal to opposite over adjacent. Opposite is 2,600, and adjacent is given as 48 kilometers. But we have to put that into meters. 48 kilometers is 48,000 meters. In other words, I just take this number and multiply it by 1,000 to convert it to meters. Okay, so remember that. To convert from kilometers to meters, just multiply the number given by 1,000. And that's what I did right here. Now, since I'm solving for an unknown angle, which is x, I need to move tan to the other side. So I'm going to have to use an inverse tan function, which looks, if you'll recall, like this. Tan to the negative 1 exponent, and then I just keep the numbers given. 2,600 divided by 48,000. Now I can enter what I see there into my scientific calculator. Let's bring that in now. Now I'm looking for the inverse tan button. Usually you can find it as a second function right above your tan button. So to access it, I'll hit shift on mine, then tan. Then I enter in brackets the fraction that I'm given, 2,600 divided by 
48,000. And then a close bracket. Then enter, and here is my answer. X is 3.1 degrees. And there you go, there's the plane's angle of descent. That's how we use the trigonometry ratios to calculate angle of descent. Let's add a concluding statement. Therefore, the plane's angle of descent is 3.1 degrees. And now it's your turn to try finding the angle of descent. So try using the same steps I showed you on this problem. An airplane flying at an altitude of 3,200 meters is approaching an airport runway at 60 kilometers away. Calculate the airplane's angle of descent. And let's give you a diagram that looks like that. Okay, so go ahead and try that one, and I'll post a solution when you're ready. Funnily enough, it turns out that the plane's angle of descent is the exact same as it was over here on the left, 3.1 degrees. Even though the runway is further away at 60 kilometers and the plane is higher up at 3,200 meters, it comes in at pretty much the exact same descent angle. So we found that by first recognizing we could use the Z law, since the horizontal line and the ground line are parallel. So this angle, the angle of descent, is identical to this angle, which we labeled x. Then in step one, we label the opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse sides. And in step two, we chose tan to set up our ratio, the opposite over the adjacent. Then we used an inverse tan on our calculator to arrive at our answer. The angle of descent is 3.1 degrees.